chapter 20, verse 27, and then we read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 10. You can stand, please stand on your feet. Uh, let's go into the word of God. Let's honor God's word as we stand in this house. 1 Corinthians, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, we read it last week. Uh, if it's on the screen, I'll live it so much. First, Proverbs 20, 27, let's start from there. Proverbs 20 and 27, praise God. The Bible says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. You can say it this way, the spirit of man is the floodlight, even of the Lord. Your spirit searches the inward part of your belly. What is in your inward part? We will discover it today, praise God. And then let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 10. The Bible says, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Another translation says, and there is none of them that is without meaning. Without meaning. Without meaning. Today, for a few minutes, I'm going to be sharing on <laughs> whose voice am I hearing? I was going to talk about the topic last week, but I discovered we've done that. Whose voice am I hearing? Can we pray? Father, thank you for the entrance of your word. Give light and even understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come today to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer and I write the word of life even upon the spirit of man. After now, oh God, make us all better people. Let's walk according to your counsel. Let the reason for sending your word be fulfilled. Thank you, Father, because we'll begin to hear you clearly and we'll walk even according to your mandate for our lives. In Jesus' matchless and beautiful name we have prayed. Can I have a believing amen? amen. Can I have a layman that is alive? Amen. You can have your seat in God's presence. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean... I think some people are already looking like they are sleeping. I don't know the kind of praise and worship you did. Maybe we did more of worship than praise. So people did not jump up. I want you to knock somebody by your side and say, wake up. Praise God. Somebody is looking at me. And <laughs> All right. So I want to share with you whose voice am I hearing. It's very important. I want to start by saying there are different kind of voices in the world. Different kind of voices. I told you. Different kind of voices in the world. Different kind of languages. And every language have their own meaning. Man has also different voices that are open to him. As you are seated before me, there are many voices open to you. If you are ever fully going to fulfill your potential, ever fully going to fulfill God's mandate for your life, then you must be able to listen. And not only listen, you must be able to decipher the voice that you are hearing. Today we are moving forward on the series we started last week. Last week I spoke about uh, how God speaks to us uh, and that the fact that God speaks clearly and he doesn't speak with any ambiguity. God speaks clearly, plainly, and you hear him. And we looked at the reason you cannot trust your dreams uh, because dreams have many sources. Uh, today we want to look at, um, and I said that whatever you think you hear in the final analysis, uh, you must test it by your spirit. Uh, let me start by saying that we cannot tell God how he will lead us. You can't tell God how he will lead you. It is therefore important that you and I are conversant with the way God leads, that we know how he leads. Many times God will lead us by his word. And another time, another major way in which God leads us is through your human spirit. And that's what I want to speak today. And I'm speaking on whose voice am I hearing, or you can call it getting guidance through your human spirit. Getting guidance through your human spirit. Let me say that the voice of the regenerated human spirit is a voice that is valid even for guidance concerning man. I know many people try to guess what, what God wants to do in their life. Many people, please don't play with this microphone. I believe, let my voice be just one way. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so many people take chances when it comes to God's leading. Uh, people pull fleas out. They say Gideon pull the fleas out. And people pull fleas out. When we talk about pulling fleas out, it may not mean putting a wool outside and then saying let it be with water and let the other side be with ground. But I saw someone when I was on another level who did that literally. This guy was, a engineering, was an engineering student, 100 level, University of Valori. And then he had an offer to come to Jomo Kenyatta University, Kenya, even to study engineering. And the guy did not know which choice to take. Because at that time, he just moved to 200 level. And then he was going to go start 100 level. So he didn't know what to do. So this man prayed. And after he has prayed, he didn't know what God was saying. Like many people, he thought God was quiet and silent. 
And so he said, you know what, I'm going to put a fleece out. I'm just going to help God. So this guy puts something, he put a wool out and said, God, let water come upon the wool. If you want me to go, let water come upon the wool. This is a friend of mine, some, a story I'm so sure of. He said, let water come upon the wool, let everywhere be ground. No water, and then, you know, dew, and then that day, there was, he said, if you want me to go, let water be on the wool alone. That's what he prayed. And then it happened just as he said it. The water was on the wool. And so man of God was ready to go. But he said, you know, I'm going to test it again. He said, let me test this again. So he said, God, if you want me to go, let water be on the wool alone. So the next time, what he did when he woke up the next day, he went outside, the water was on the wool and was on the ground. So the guy was more confused than ever before. Why? Because that's what happens when you take chances. It's a game of luck and a game of chances. Somebody say, if you want me to actually travel today, the first person I should see, let it be a woman. And then the first person you see is a dog. So you are asking yourself, God, I'm confused. You didn't show me a man. You didn't show me a woman. Am I supposed to go or not to go? There are dangers of flying out on fleas. Today, I want us to understand that your inward and your inner voice should be trusted. It's able. You can trust it if you are a born-again believer. I want to talk to you about three voices that every one of us have. Whether you are black, yellow, green, or purple. In complexion, it doesn't matter. Three voices are open to you. Whether you are an unbeliever or you are a believer. Three voices you hear clearly. The first voice is the voice of the body. The voice of the body. That's the voice voice. It's the voice that speaks through feeling. Ah, you hear people say, I feel pain in my body. I feel pain. Oh, I can smell, I can smell chicken in this house. Glory to God. That's the voice of your human body. You enter a house, you say, ha! Ah! They say there's no food. You say, I can smell indomie. <laughs> Something is cooking here. That's the voice of your human body. Therefore, when believer says, I feel God in this meeting, they are mistaken. God is not a body. God is not perfume. God is not like that, that you can smell or feel. Scripture told us that God is a spirit. Therefore, they do not know what they are speaking of. Was it it that your body does not want to go? When people say, you know, I don't feel like going. Ah, is it that you are tired? That's not the right word because that's not the voice even of your body. Number two, therefore I want to say to you here because many people live by their feeling. They say, I don't love him anymore. When I saw him, there were no there were no butterflies in my eyes. You know, many times the problem with the believer is that the believer has read so much M and B novels. You have read beams and then they read about Jennifer, sweet Jennifer. You read it and you love it. And when James came to Jennifer, first thing that happened to Jennifer was there were butterflies in his belly and then he could see, was flying. He said, ah, God, I just love this guy. But there is this guy standing before you say, I believe God is sending me to you. But you can't feel nothing in your body. And then you feel, I can't hear God, God is not speaking, you are not the one for me because you cannot feel anything. God does not lead you through your body. If you live your life by feelings, you are going to be in trouble very soon because feelings change and they are most times based on momentary things. Can I ask you a simple question? Have you found people who are in love before and they are not in love anymore? They hate themselves now, but before, they could not do without anyone, each other. That tells you those things are momentary. Praise God. And then the second voice is the voice of the soul or the voice of the body, which how does he speak? He speak through reasoning. Reasoning. This is where reason and logic comes in. God will not lead you through your mind. It may not therefore be logical. The things God will say to do may not be logical. When God spoke to Abraham, he said, Abraham, leave your father's house, your mother's house, and go to a place where I will show you. You remember that story? And then Abraham says, Abraham told, you know, sometimes when we read the scriptures, we read it like it is not so real. Uh, imagine you come and then you go meet your daddy and mommy and say, God said I should leave. And daddy say, where are you supposed to go? Are you going to Lagos to meet your auntie? God said I should leave alone. He said, are you going to Lagos to meet your auntie? Are you going to Abuja? I said, no. God just said I should go. Are you going to visit your brother that is working in Abuja? I said, no. I don't know. God just said I should go. So which direction are you going? God says he will tell me as I begin to step out. You know, we live in a day now that if you tell your father that, you won't come to church for the next seven months because he will believe you have gone local. I've gone mad. Something is wrong with you. They will call doctors concerning you because they cannot feel that what they can't believe that what you are saying is logical. What God told Abraham to do was not logical. When God told Abraham he was going to give birth to a child, it wasn't logical. God will not lead you through your soul, he will only lead you through the voice of the human spirit. 
praise God. And that's the third voice. Uh, which um, allow me to say to you that it is the human spirit. The human spirit speaks. It speaks. That human spirit are the voice. Uh, one of the major voices of the human spirit is conscience. Uh, and you, let, me, let me say this to you. Many believers get it wrong here. You know, people say, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit convicts me. The Holy Spirit will never convict you. Can I say that again? The Holy Spirit does not convict a believer. You won't find that anywhere in the scripture. Scripture says the Holy Spirit will convict the word of their sin. Uh, what convicts you is your human spirit. Uh, the regenerated human spirit. Uh, that spirit that is in you that is now born again. Uh, that is in the likeness and the nature of God. Uh, we begin to tell you what you did was wrong. That you should never obey that way. You should never have done that. Uh, that's the voice uh, of the human spirit. How many of you have ever heard the voice of your human spirit? You cursed out. You lied to somebody. You, you scope someone. You don't call it lying, church. You call it scope. You scope someone. You scope your mom. And then, and then you, you, you sat down and then you, the spirit was saying, you know that was wrong. You know that was wrong. You know that's the voice of your human spirit. That has nothing to do even with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. You don't feel as it concerns the things of the spirit. You sense when people say, I feel God there. No, you don't feel. You are talking about your spiritual senses. We are talking about sensing God. Now, let me continue by saying this. The voice of the human spirit is what is called the inner voice. So today I want to speak to you on the voice of the human spirit. I want you to look at the human spirit, which is the core of man. So let me start by saying, what is the human spirit? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Scripture says, Paul saying, says, may your own spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So he gave you the hierarchy of what is the core of man. Your spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. Job 32 verse 8. Scripture says there is a spirit in man. And then the spirit of the Almighty gives him understanding. And that transition says the spirit of the Lord gives him understanding. That talks about two spirits there. The first spirit is your human spirit. The second spirit he is the Holy Ghost. The scripture told us in Romans chapter 8 verse 16. I love that. You see the two spirits talking about the two spirits. Romans 8 and verse 16. The scripture says, and the spirit of God be as witness with your spirit. How do I know See that word capital spirit. That's what the KJV put it. That's the capital spirit. Anytime you find the capital S, it's talking about the Holy Ghost. Anytime you see the small S in reading the scriptures, you find your human spirit. So the Holy Spirit itself, beer. But the literal translation, the proper translation is not itself, it's himself. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness with your spirit. The Holy Spirit testifies with your spirit that you are a child of God. Therefore, in that way, you see the principle the Holy Spirit operates by. The Holy Spirit only communicates with the spirit, not with the mind or the body of the believer. Can I say that to you again? The Holy Spirit only communicates with the spirit, not with the mind or the body of the believer. Number two, God does not deal with the outward man. You have a responsibility to do that. God only deals with the inward man. Paul referred to the inward man in two ways. Calling about the human spirit. God called it the inward man. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. He called it the inward man. So when we talk about the inward man, we talk about your human spirit. And then number two, Peter called it the hidden man of the heart. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. The hidden man of the heart. So when we talk about the inward man, the hidden man, we are talking about the human spirit. The regenerated human spirit. It was that part of Adam that died when Adam sinned. When Adam sinned, God told him, he promised him, he said, you shall die. And he truly died. What died in him was the human spirit. So, allow me, let's go back again to Genesis. I want to show you certain things in Genesis. In Genesis, scripture told us, I think I've said it again and again in this church, so I won't really teach it so long. Scripture told us in Genesis, uh, and then you read 1, 26, uh, God said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. I told us that what God made at that point, what God created in the likeness of God. Because according to 1 John chapter 4 verse, no, I said, according to John 4 24, God is a spirit. So what God created in that time and at that season was your spirit man. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, scripture says, and God formed man. What God formed there was your body. So the first thing God made was your spirit. Therefore, your spirit was created in the likeness of God. I love the literal Hebrew translation 
of that verse, Genesis 1, 27. Scripture says, and Elohim filled the man with his image. With his image, he filled him. Male and female, he filled them. That translation says, he barred them. What God put in man and filled man up with was his spirit. So it was his spirit that was alive that made man have the ability to communicate with God. You remember the book of Genesis. Scripture told us that God came in the cool of the day and came into the garden. Because the spirit of man was very active. Man would relate and speak with God normally. He could deal with God on a scale of a spirit to a spirit. Why? Because man was fully spirit. He had been filled with the spirit of God. So when God came in into the cool of the day, man knew that God was here. Why? Because God had filled him with the very presence with himself. But when man sinned, how did man sin? Man took, disobeyed God, one, two, he now took of the tree of knowledge, of good and evil. And that's what activated the soul of man. So man began to live from his soul rather from his spirit. Initially, the plan of God was that you should live from your spirit and not from your soul. But because you took the, I said you, yes, you took it. You took it through Adam. Because you took uh, even the tree, the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, your soul was activated. You now began to live from your soul to your body and the spirit was relegated. Why? Because the spirit had died the moment man sinned. Therefore, scripture told us, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. That new word, new creature, means he has returned to the original formation. That's what the Hebrew says. That's what the Greek says. He has returned to the original formation. That part that you lost in the Garden of Eden, you have been returned to it. Therefore, for a regenerated man, he should live now from his spirit, not from his soul. Let me say three things to you here. With your body, you contact the physical world. Number two, with your mind, you contact the mental and the intellectual world. <laughs> Therefore, you can find people who are so beautiful, but they don't know Jack. You understand? <laughs> that means their body is good, but their mind, they can't connect with the intellectual world. And then with your spirit, you connect with the spiritual world. See, the reason you can't hear God is because you, there's nothing, you have not done anything with your spirit. Man is a spirit. Bible told us, sir, uh, that God is the God of all spirits. Number 16, 22. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says the word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any sword, just what? Piercing even to the dividing of what? Soul and spirit. Praise God. The problem the believer has in hearing God is that he has been trained to live by his soul, to trust his reasoning and feeling, but he hasn't been taught to recognize the voice of his spirit. Neither has his spirit been trained to recognize the voice of God. Many times, listen to this, we nourish the body, we train the soul, but we neglect the spirit, and we wonder why we cannot be guided by God. He will only lead us by our spirit, but we have not trained our spirit. The believer must be taught and trained to recognize and listen to the voice of his regenerated human spirit. How do you train? I'll mention it quickly so that I can talk about the voice of the human spirit. How can you train your spirit? Number one, the word of God. By reading the word of God. By studying the word of God. By meditating on the word of God. You see, you don't just read it, you study it. You don't just study it, you meditate upon it. That's how to grow. Joshua chapter 1 and then verse 9. That's what the scripture says in Psalm, again, Psalm 1 and verse 1. You see, you must put attention into studying the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, A newborn babe desire the sincere of the word of God, that your spirit man can grow even thereby. Hebrews chapter 5, 12 to 14, the writer of the letter to, of Hebrew. The writer said, he said, when you have need, we say you have shown that you have need of meek, when you are supposed to now be feeding on the meat of the word of God. Listen, the word of God is the essential food even for the spirit man to grow. Number two, prayer. Listen to this. When we pray, we build up ourselves, we build up our spirit. Paul put it in a way I like it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 14. Paul says uh, that I will pray in understanding. He said, what is, it that, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit uh, and I will also pray with understanding. Why is he doing that? Because he knows when he prays in the spirit and understanding, his spirit is growing. Jude 20, scripture says, build up yourself on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. How again can I train my spirit man? Exercise your spirit. Your exercise your spirit by studying, by praying, and putting your faith to work. That's how you exercise your spirit. How can a man grow muscle? You go to the gym daily and then you press up, you carry, you carry. Metals, you carry weights, you carry things that are difficult and hard. And as you carry them, you flex your muscle. You also grow in the spirit, even by building a life, even upon the word of God. How do you work out? Reading, praying, studying the word of God is the spiritual workout for the believer. Praise God. Now, I want to concretely tell us what is the voice of the human spirit. Why? Because it is important. Every man's spirit has a voice. Whether you are saved or not saved. But the new birth is a rebirth of the human spirit. I don't know whether there's anyone here who became more beautiful when you gave your life to Jesus. You became taller, shorter, maybe darker when you gave your life to Jesus. Nothing didn't happen. Why? Because the change that happened in you was your spirit. It has nothing to do with your body. The devil can give you, listen to this. Your spirit has the life and the nature of God. For the, spirit dwell, for the Holy Spirit dwells within you. He will therefore lead you through the spirit, not through the head. Because it does not dwell in your head. He will not lead you through your body because it doesn't dwell in your body. It's not like when we divide you up now, we'll find God inside. Praise God. He is dwelling in your spirit. Your spirit therefore gets information that you don't know anything about. Therefore, you need to learn to live by the spirit. I want to tell you four things. Four ways in which the human spirit speaks. Four ways. And this is very practical. Very practical. I've left the field of theology. I gave you those background theologically so that you can be correct sir, when you are defining it to anybody. But I want to get to the zones of practicals. Praise God. The first thing you need to know, how does the spirit speak? It speaks through your conscience. What is conscience? It is a person's moral sense of right and wrong. It's viewed as a guide for one's behavior. Some people say that the conscience is not a safeguard for the believer. I don't know whether you have heard people say that before. They say the conscience is not a safeguard for the believer. Listen, that is not true. Why? Because God dwells in your spirit. If you are not born again, your conscience may have been defiled. But for a believer whose conscience is not defiled, the conscience is a safeguard. The believer's conscience is the voice of his human spirit. It becomes, therefore, the voice in which God speaks to him. The undefined conscience of the believer is a sure and safeguard in Christ, like behavioral molding and character formation. Listen, there are times when you do certain things. The conscience is the best molder of your character. It's the best thing that can mold your character. You spoke to someone somehow, very terribly, maybe the person did something wrong. And then you went and you went to sleep. And then in the middle of the night, you just went to pee. Praise God. And then the Spirit started telling you, born again believer. Is that the way to talk to somebody? And now, he's going to mold your character in order to become Christ-like in nature. He's going to tell you what you did was bad. So next time, you won't do it again. Why? Because that's the voice of your conscience. Praise God. Now, how can I be sure that this is true? Acts 24 verse 16. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Praise God. Paul was talking about his conscience there. Let's read Romans chapter 9 verse 1. Romans 9 verse 1. He said, I said the truth in Christ. I lie not. 
my conscience also bearing me witness. How? In the Holy Ghost. That tells you I am born again. The Holy Spirit lives inside. Therefore, my conscience also bears me witness. When you lie, the first thing that tells you you are lying is not man. It's not when you are found out. Your spirit tells you. Ah, look at your mouth. Even when you say you are scoping, that's what he does. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. Paul said, I thank God with myself from my fathers with pure conscience. You see that? You can have a pure conscience. And Bible told us in Titus chapter 1 verse 15. He said, unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is not impure. But even their mind and their conscience. I say 2 Timothy 1 3. My God. Titus 1. All right. But even their mind and their conscience is what? Is defiled. But for you who is born again, the Holy Spirit has come in and he has regenerated your spirit. Your conscience is not defiled. Therefore, you can trust your conscience. But can someone who is not born again trust his conscience? No, because he is not pure. But for you who is born again, you can trust your conscience. Number two, the voice of the human spirit is that you perceive. It speaks through perception. A real way by which God leads his people is by perception. What is perception? It means to become aware or conscious of something. To come to realize or understand. Many times in the scripture, this is the way people came into knowledge. It, was like the Holy, it wasn't like the Holy Spirit spoke to them. The Holy Spirit did not speak to them. They didn't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. They just knew. They perceived. This from the Holy Spirit speaking. This is a knowing that comes to your spirit man. At certain times, God leads us by perception. A deep knowing of a thing in our spirit. You know it firmly and assuredly like you know your name. Somebody asked me, why can I be sure that that's not my husband? As in, you know it like you know your name. It's a perception. Nobody spoke to you. You didn't hear God speak through the Holy Spirit. But you just know it. Somebody said, how do you know this? The church will attend. You know it uh, like you know your name, perception. I'll tell you that Jesus operated by perception a lot in the scriptures. Matthew chapter 2 verse 8. Bible says, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they saw reason within themselves. Mark 2 8, not Matthew. Mark 2 8. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they saw reason within themselves. How did he perceive? In his spirit. He just knew. He became aware. Let's read Matthew 16 and verse 8. Many times in the scriptures, that's how Jesus knew things. You know, I've seen people talk to me, and I just perceive they were lying. I just, I know it like I know my name. And sometimes some people are talking to you, and they're not giving you the whole information. You just know it. How do you know it? You know it like you know your name. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, that they saw reason within themselves. So you can even perceive the thoughts of people. Jesus perceived their thought. He said, this is how they reason. This is how these guys are reasoning. He perceived. How? In his spirit. So what is perceiving? It means to come to knowledge. You just know. You just suddenly know. Somebody told me, I knew I was going to get that job. I was not surprised. Do you have a word from God? No, I just knew it. That's a perception. You just know it. Matthew 22, verse 18. Matthew 22, 18. Again and again, Jesus operated like this. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. Did they carry gun? No. He knew in his spirit. There are people who call themselves your friends. I'm talking about divine guidance. They call themselves your friends. But you just perceive. You know in your spirit that something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. They don't, have your, they don't, have, they don't love you anymore. You know. You know like you know your name. You might have been friends a, at a time. But right now you know it. That something has changed. You just know. Somebody can, they can tell you to explain it. You just know. You know it out in your spirit. In the core of you. You just know. Perception gives you deeper understanding of a thing. Than that which is evidenced. 
A guy may be telling you, you know, my dad is skinny car, and he may look like it, but you know he's lying. You just know. He said, you know, you are my first girlfriend. You don't have any proof, but you know he's lying. You know. But you know, many times believers will not go on based on perception. You are still saying God did not see anything. God did not see anything. The human spirit is enough to guide you. Why? Because your human spirit is created in the nature of God. Perception gives you a deeper meaning of a situation or circumstances. Jesus was talking to those guys and people were just hearing their words, but Jesus knew their hearts. Sometimes when people talk to me, I just close my eyes and then I'm just searching in the spirit. I'm not waiting for the Holy Spirit to see anything. I'm looking for my spirit to pick up signals. So that I know things about them that they don't even know. I remember many years ago, I was supposed to go on a journey. I sat down at my office. I had already had parked. I was going to go in the evening. I sat down at my office and I knew that if I travel, I would die. I knew it. You know, that's how God guides. Somebody said, boy, he didn't see anything. Don't see, it's a spirit world. We are not talking about physical things here. We are not talking about your soul or logic here. I, I didn't have to go and test it or try it. I just knew I wasn't supposed to go. There are times uh, when I was looking for houses, uh, there are times I would enter a house like this uh, and I know I'm not supposed to be here. But somebody will say, no, and let's call intercessors. You are wasting your time. There are numerous examples of people who perceive in the scriptures. Let's consider a case I love so much. Acts 27 verse 10. Let's read Acts 27 verse 10. A little bit of background here. Paul was being taken away in a voyage and he was supposed to go to Rome. And then there was, a, there was wind. There, there was, at that time, there was no wind, but it was a time that it was dangerous for people to travel. But people still risk it. You understand? They can tell you Boko Haram is on the road, but you don't have a church, you will go. Praise God. Okay, so they knew it was not safe to travel, but they wanted to still go on. You know what Paul told them in 27.10 of Acts? He said, and Paul said unto them, Sars, please, I, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Sars, <laughs> I perceive that this voyage will be with art and more damage, not only of the leading and sheep, but of our lives also. Did he say God told me? Did he say I saw a vision? He said, I knew him. I, he knew there was a knowing. He was sure, even if you tell him his name was not Paul, he might agree. But this one, <laughs> I perceive. But they went on on that journey. You knew what happened to them. You knew what happened to them. They were saved only just by the whiskers. Why? Because they went on despite being perceiving something in your heart. If you perceive anything in your heart, don't do it. Obey your, the voice of your human spirit. It may not be too loud, but it's a knowing. We just come to knowledge. And then number three, because of our time. Some people call this, it's called intuition. Intuition is more like perception. Intuition is more like perception. But it has a key difference. And intuition is the ability to understand something instinctively. You just understand it. Without the need for conscious reasoning. An ability that makes it possible to know something. Without any proof or evidence. You know some people are in church born again believers. I mean they look like us. And then they go around. And then they say they want to marry this particular lady. And then you just... <laughs> You, you tell them, you don't marry them. Ah, this man of God that prays in tongues, that, uh, that works in a very awesome place, beautiful place. If you tell them, don't do it. Why? Because I have information much more than the real. I, I've gotten information concerning this person. Don't do it. Intuition is that spirit inward compass that guides us in decision making. I would explain intuition for you and you will get it. <laughs> Your spirit has the capacity to search out a matter. Are you with me? I'm not saying the Holy Spirit. Your spirit, the human spirit, has the capacity to search out a matter. It speaks truth or information from the spirit of God. And then you just know. You know. And you can't tell how you know. You just know. The believer has the ability to know and understand a matter 
without any conscious reasoning, proof, or evidence. I remember a lady who was brought for healing a long time ago, and then a while back, and then they were trying to pray for her, and then they have come out with this, the reason why they think she was suffering from the predicament. And then I looked at her, and I just knew. I understood what she was going through. And I said to her, come here. When you were in secondary school, someone gave you something. Uh, the thing the person gave you, where is it? Uh, and he said, before you ask me, I cannot remember. But I know that it is in our house. Uh, before you ask me, I can remember, but now I can't remember. But I know it's in our house. Uh, and they went, uh, called the parents, searched it out. Uh, and when we returned the evil thing back, she was fine. Uh, how did I know? I had a gut feeling. I knew. I understood. Clearly, without any evidence, I just knew. If you ask me how I knew, I don't know. I can't prove it. I just knew. A while back, I sat down in my office. And then as I sat down, I saw a lady somewhere by one o'clock. I saw her entering the house. I saw them. And I smiled. <laughs> and then it just came. And then I called her. Two days later, I said, where were you one o'clock yesterday? <laughs> and then she begins. <laughs> I said, I knew where you are. And <laughs> I knew where you were. How did I know? Did the Holy Spirit tell me anything? No. My human spirit is such out that matter. <laughs> there is a Google inside of you. It's called a spiritual Google. Listen, it can search out a matter. Let me explain how it works for you. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's read from 9 to 12. First Corinthians chapter 2 and 9 to 12. You see, if you get this, you, you are made for life. Many times people say God is not speaking. They want to just hear law. A few times you will hear that. The real way God will lead you is through his word and through your human spirit. All right. Uh, but as it is written, I have not seen nor hear, heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by what? By what? By his spirit. That's capital. That's the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of man that is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Is that not so? And then verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the word, but the spirit which is of God. That you may do what? But you might know the things that are freely given to us of who? Of who? So the Spirit of God knows everything that is of God. Is that not so? That's what the Bible says. Just like your spirit also knows everything that is inside of you. Do you understand that? Now the scripture told us that the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, it has now been given also to you. In addendum to your spirit, you have the Holy Spirit living on your inside. Now the Holy Spirit and your spirit communicate. They come together. How? Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. Can we go there very quickly? See 17. Of course, the Bible says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is what is one spirit with him. Therefore, your spirit and God's spirit has become one. They are no longer two. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit, let's say this is God, for instance. This is God, for instance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who will I use as man? Let me use George as man. So this is man. So as God gets the information here. Because the spirit of this God has also been given to this man. So this man, apart from having the human spirit, he also has the spirit of God. Therefore, everything Mr. Benga now thinks about, everything God thinks about, the Holy Spirit on his inside will get that matter. And he has it on the inside. Now, it is now Mr. George's duty to ensure that the spirit on his inside assess the Holy Spirit also, which is on his inside, so that he can get information. Mr. Benga has given his spirit to him. God has given his spirit to him. God's spirit has everything, has every knowledge that God has, and is on his inside. But you don't only have that spirit here. You have also given that spirit to man. So man has living on him, God's spirit, and man himself has a spirit 
spiritual. How do man access God's spirit? Not through his soul, not through his mind, but through his human spirit. And that human spirit will now search out a matter. Bible told us in the book of Proverbs 20, scripture says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings to search it out. It is the honor of your human spirit to search out whatever God is hiding in his spirit. Can you hide anything from your human spirit? So God already has it there. But God will not tell you except your human spirit search it out. Therefore, your human spirit knows things. Much more than you can explain. Proverbs 25 verse 2. Scripture told us it is the honor. That's why Proverbs 20 27. Proverbs 20 27. Scripture says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. Sometimes you just sit down, but your spirit is not sleeping. That spirit is just searching matters out. <laughs> okay, one, it's it just searching matters out. Good, good, it's just searching it out. So sometimes you, <laughs> you just know. Some people come to me and say, you know, we want to marry each other. And I, and I just know it will not work. I just know. Somebody, and they will not be asking you stupid questions. He said, how do you know it will not work? I don't know how I know. That's the truth. I don't know why it will not work. I just know it will not work. I don't deal in the realm of logic. In the realm of logic is when you deal with why. In the realm of faith, which is the realm of God, you only deal with yes, sir. Oh, there are certain things you just pick up. You just know, you know, you know. But you can't even tell how you know. God will use your spirit to guide you. He will use it to enlighten you. As you meditate and feed upon the word of God. He becomes more and more a safeguard. The human spirit becomes more and more a safeguard. A safeguard. As, see, let me say this to you. <laughs> if I was a woman, right now, the way my woman spirit is, if you are asking me out, I know immediately whether you are the one or not the one. I don't need to go and pray. Because see, pray, I can, I, my, as you are saying it, he's searching it out. How is this one? How is this one? Baba will tell you, I zoom in in the spirit. What he's doing is that he's searching it out. I'm connecting my source to the source of all life. That's why one of the things I say is that I have access to the treasure house of God's knowledge. Why? Because I have access to the Holy Spirit. As you speak to me, I'm just looking at you. You know, some people will come to you and say, you know, when we now go to the meeting, somebody now says, somebody now says, I know what you said. I know what you said. Though you are not telling me what you said, I know what you said. I don't need anybody to tell me. I, why? Because God's spirit is everywhere. He was there when you said it. Those who are really close to me know that there's no secret can, can, when you are dealing with me. No secret at all. You don't surprise me anyhow. Even sometimes when they have done the surprise, my wife will be begging me and say, please, child, child, do like you are surprised. Do like you are surprised. Except you don't have the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, I can connect. Signal one man here. I will just throw the mask there. All spots near. We'll just be getting it. Praise God. Am I helping somebody here? So you see, in all the things we have seen in the scripture, did you hear? And God told me that is the job I should take. You see, sometimes you people just manufacture nonsense. You didn't hear anything like that. Because a pastor said, God told me that. You now think you have to say that to sound spiritual. In more than 100,000 leadings of God in your life, only a few will be by the Holy Ghost and his words. Many times, it will be by the human spirit. Can your human spirit be trusted? Yes, it can. Finally, number four. How do you know? It speaks true check in the inner man. The spirit also speaks to us true checks in the inner man. What you can call buzzers in the spirit is what many people call losing their peace. When you are about to, you know something that you even get into a relationship. And then when you get there, you just lose your peace. Those are called checks in the spirit. They are called buzzers in the spirit. You know, certain times I even tell people I will do something. 
And then when I said I will do it, immediately I said it, I feel I should not do it again. I just know it. I sense it. So I say I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. Why? Because I want my peace back. Because I will have to obey even this bossa in my spirit. It's a valid decision maker. But many times when it comes, it only tells us to stop or proceed. It can't reveal to you what to do. That's the problem with checks in the spirit. It only tells you, duro, lo, malo. But it won't reveal God's plan for your life. That's why it is the primary human spirit way of leading. Many people just stop there. They say, ah, why are you dating? Why, why, why do you take that job? I have peace. I have peace. Why are you in that church? I have peace. Why are you in that relationship? I have peace. Peace are for babies. Tell your neighbor, peace are for babies. It's kindergarten, elementary leading by the human spirit. <laughs> Yay. You came today. You have come, you have come. Acts 16. Acts 16. Let's read Acts 16, chapter 6 to 10. Acts 16. <laughs> now when they had gone, who are they? This was Paul and his evangelistic team. When they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia, that was a check. That was a buzzer. They were not free. They could not go anywhere. After they were come to Mysia, they were assayed to go into Bithynia. They wanted to go themselves. That's why sometimes you want to go into a relationship yourself. You understand? You want to just go into that business by yourself. You understand? Sometimes you just want to just go and travel to America by yourself. You understand? You want to just go by themselves. But scripture says, but the spirit suffered them not. He didn't see anything. Because the peace, man. There was a checker, a bosser in their spirit. And they passing by by Missia came down to trust. You know, they had that, but they don't even know what to do. He didn't tell them. You see, he just tell you stop, start, go for. It doesn't reveal anything. And the Bible now tells you how they now knew what to do. In verse nine, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed, saying, "Come over to Macedonia and help us." If you only have checkers, you will not get anything done in the realm of the spirit and for God, because bosses will just start and stop you. You understand? But if you want to move in the fullness of the mind of God, you need to move beyond buzzers. Praise God. Praise God. If we will listen to the guidance of our spirits, we will not have entered into terrible relationships. Lose a lot of money. A lot of money. I told you about how I was going to lose a lot of money. I was going to lose a lot of money. It was even a money that was borrowed. <laughs> borrowed money are very difficult to lose <laughs> because you have to pay them back. Praise God. <laughs> Thank God for bosses in the spirit. I just did not have peace. I had to now go and pray. And then God told me not to do it. You understand? So I didn't do it. Now somebody is asking me, can I trust my human spirit? Can I trust? You know, yes, last week I said reasons why you should not trust your dreams. Now I should also tell you, should you trust your human spirit? Why is it sure? Why is it a sure guidance? I said dreams are not sure guides. But I am saying that the human spirit is a sure guide. Why? Because it has the nature of God. The inward man is good for making decisions because it has the nature of God. Just like in the physical, children partake of their father. I look like my father. I share the DNA of my father. Do you understand that? Therefore, even in the spiritual, the Bible told us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, that you and I have become partakers of the divine nature. Therefore, what is that nature of God that is in you? It's your spirit. Sir. So that nature is in you. You can trust it. Number two, the Bible told us again. Now, before I go to number two, don't forget that the Bible told us that the spirit man is created in the image and in the likeness of God. That's one of the reasons you can trust it. Praise God. Is number two, the spirit man is renewed and regenerated after God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. In as much as it is not in the flesh, you know, certain times what people call spirit is not spirit, it's in the flesh. It's in the flesh. You have been so close to this woman, you have been so close to this man. He calls you every night. And then you are asking yourself, is it God's will for my life? Let's first of all drop your emotions before we can talk about anything. Because you walked there yourself. Do you know how you to hate a church? If you hate the pastor, you hate the church. So it has nothing to do with spirit leading. It has everything to do with the fact that you don't like pastors who are on glasses. Praise God. Amen. So sometimes we do many things that we think uh, 
is God. But that leading is of the flesh. Praise God. Of the flesh. Flesh generated. When you see certain people in church, when a lady passed, their eyes is going. Pam! What tell it? At certain times, we are sitting like that. God said, look at that man. Look at that man. And then we see you say, oh, tell you. The face just follow the woman. Follow the woman. And follow the woman out. And then next week, we saw again that your face was also on the woman. And then you look at her. Talk to her. And then you come and meet us. And say, God said that is his will for your life. <laughs> <laughs> that is a flesh-generated will. See, can we be truthful to ourselves? I will love you by communicating with you. I will like you by communicating with you. If I talk to you every day and I stay with you, we will share affection. Intimacy will come in. And so I will not even see your bad side anymore. I will only see your good side. So when I pray and lift my eyes to heaven and say, Father, is this you? I hear a voice saying, Arise, kill, and eat. Because I have prepared a table before you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's feelings. That's of the flesh. It has nothing to do with the spirit. Number three, why can I trust my spirit man? It has information and it receives information beyond the sensual world. When you come to a knowledge of a thing, that you know it is impossible for you to have knowledge of it. Because you never read about it. You just know. There was a time someone was sick and I knew what was wrong. I just said, go and buy this, buy this, and then you'll be fine. And then when he went to the hospital, when, and then he was fine, and then he said, how did I know? I just knew that that was what you are suffering from. Oh, momito, don't drink water. I just knew that that man is a jokuta, my mommy, they can eat stone without drinking water. And it has a way of affecting your body. I said, no. He said, how did you know? I knew Let's forget how I know. You see, many times people just want to know how we know. Let's forget that one. That's being canal. I say I knew. That's the most important. I know. That's it. I know. You can keep in yourself in this relationship. In fact, you can get married. Somebody got married to say, we are married now. <laughs> I laughed. Don't worry. <laughs> 15 years. Our <I> party. <laughs> you see, they think that because they did what we said they should not do, we have lost me that I'm enjoying my marriage. <laughs> When the man, first of all, give you the first blow, reality will dawn. Or he just travel, and then he, does, he didn't come back home. And then they ask, where is daddy Damilola? Went to America. You don't know. He has not gone. Why? Because your human spirit can find out about him much more than this sandelic spiritual nature is giving you. He's calm. He's just so cool. Ah. <laughs> Number four. Number four. Now, the devil cannot be the source of your leading in your human spirit. Why? Because the devil cannot access your human spirit. When people say, it's the devil that led me wrongly, it was because they were led by their flesh and their mind. You can never be led by your spirit wrongly because the devil cannot access your spirit. Your spirit is already with God. It's already joined with the Lord. You can only have one leading from your spirit. Source of it is God. Your spirit already belongs to God. You know, some people think, I give you my spirit, oh Lord. You're wasting your time. It's already with him. Did you collect it back? It's already with him. Stop saying all those things that make me think you don't read your Bible. You see, it's already with him. What you can give God is your soul. What you can give God is consecrate your body to him. Consecrate your body. I give you my spirit. And then they say, man, the devil, hey! And everyone will be shouting. Ignorance people, leading ignorance people. Your spirit is with God. Your spirit is with God. He's joined with the Lord. He's with the Lord. He's safe with him. And he will guide you and lead you even through your spirit. I trust God that when we begin to listen, even to our human spirit, we begin to pick up signals. We begin to get guidance. Why? Because you have access to the Holy Spirit who knows all things. And he can lead us even through our human spirit. Your human spirit is not the source of any information. You only get the information from the Holy Ghost. 
and through the Holy Ghost, uh, he sends it to you. Your phone does not have any access to the internet. Your phone cannot access the internet from anything. What it needs is either a mast or a Wi-Fi. It needs a mast or a Wi-Fi in order to access the internet. Therefore, you can also not access God except through the Holy Ghost. Bow down your heart, bow down your head. I, I, your head. I want to ask people here.